Chicago is a funny town. People really like the city. You know, it's like a lot of people ask me, you know, you know, why have you stayed in Chicago this long? You know, or why do you like making games in Chicago? And in all honesty, it's not that I like making games in Chicago. I just like being in Chicago. I think I'm in Indie City Games, Indie City Collective, VGA Art Gallery, Chicago. I always forget what it's called. I'm not sure if having a strong indie community here necessarily helps the studios or not. Well, the Chicago Foundation for the Interactive Arts, Bitbash, another one. You're getting a lot of people who are starting their careers who just feel like they don't need to work at a studio at all. I mean, there is the Chicago broad shoulders, blue collar, we're gonna get shit done. On top of that though, I think part of the Midwest charm is our humor and that helps lighten the heaviness you might have with that practical approach. I can't imagine not being indie now, because if I couldn't bring my dog to work, it would stick. It would be horrible. <laughs> or like, it would be it would be like so different, you know? I don't blame them. In all honesty, if, if technology that we have now was around back then and the community that is around here now was back then, I probably wouldn't have worked at Midway either when I got out of school. I probably would have just gone completely independent. Whether or not that would have been a good idea or not, that's beside the point, you know. What's up guys? I'm Craig Stern. This is Indie City Games. Welcome. But first we have a couple talks about VR and AR. And what they are. <laughs> and then at the end, we're going to have our usual open play and mingling. So uh, without further ado, put your hands together for Brian Trank. Cool. Basically said, all right, I'm going to look at art history I'm going to look at artistic practice, and I'm going to look at games as a medium. And I'm going to think and articulate and research and play how we can bring the two together. So I, I looked at that and I looked at art history and I, I wrote a book um, called Avant-Garde Technical, or <laughs> Avant-Garde Video Games Playing with Technoculture that kind of articulated that vision and started making projects that I finally felt like, okay, I'm not just doing these practical, like learn a language, but I'm doing games that are kind of on the frontier of different types of experiences that only games could provide. Riverlane. I'm on them. Boy, we tear up that water, something fires. Right. All right, shoot it. Yeah. I was fine. Joyful or philosophical or fearful types of games that are, uh, are actually worth making and worth playing. Hoping to let students do the same thing, like push the medium in ways they find meaningful, but that also the public, like either the, the buyer, the player, the art community, whoever they choose, also finds meaningful and worth playing. You know, Chicago tends to have this background in manufacturing. You know, everything was made in Chicago, like Midway Games, you know, and even back when it was Williams, you know, they would make their own cabinets. I mean, they weren't being outsourced to, to China or anything like that. We, you know, we made the cabinets in the factory right next to where we were making the games. So we walked through the assembly lines and see all this. And so everything was made here. And I think that attitude went to DePaul because a lot of their instructors came from Midway. And so it was all about, you know what, we do our own thing. Whether you go indie or not, you need to know everything, just in case all hell breaks loose and you need to know it. Students make uh, projects that are in scope to finish in 10 weeks and they're also innovative or they're compelling or worth making in some way. Like they'll stand out in the world, either in festivals or in the marketplace. So basically success on their own terms. So let me take a step back. Do you feel like there are, looking ahead, we were just talking about schedules earlier, do you think that you will be able to address these problems by the end of the quarter? That's the big issue. Scope is 
always a huge issue here. So what do you think, realistically? I mean, DePaul's uh, place in Chicago game development is super important. I would say that, you know, with all due respect to all the other colleges and universities in town that teach game design, I think DePaul is definitely the strongest. You know, I'm not sure what their secret sauce is. I think, you know, my feeling is that they have the right mix of game design, art, and engineering all kind of you know, put together. So they have a good ecosystem. Half of it is scaring you into thinking you're not going to get a job and then you probably won't get a job. And it has huge repercussions. Like, th these are their lives. <laughs>
Well, I'm Greg Woland. I'm a game developer. I've been making games for about 10 years now. My name is Sebastian Gostewa, and uh, I make video games in Chicago. Or I've made one. Uh, I'm Chris Wade. I'm a Chicago indie game developer. I'm Ben Perez, and I am a programmer here at uh, Trinket Studios working on Battleship Brigade. We were at Wide Load together. I quit Disney Wide Load June 22nd. For some reason, I remember that date, not a lot of other ones. Well, the main thing that we're working on now is Battleship Brigade. Uh, it's going on three years of development, I believe. At first, we had a lot of Disney savings, and we were like, oh, this is perfect. We got our Disney pensions. <laughs> um, and so we self-funded without a problem for the first two games. And our motto at the beginning was uh, small games with big personality. <laughs> Small games with big characters, something like that. <laughs> we just kind of threw that out the window. Like, big characters, big story, big gameplay. Uh, it's a uh, fantasy Iron Chef game uh, where you play as a chef who must uh, appease the judges in a grand tournament in this fantasy universe. Yeah, on, on the one hand, that's exactly what we wanted, right? Like, we wanted to do something bigger. We wanted to take on our indie challenge. And like, in this case, it was like, let's try to figure out how to do cooking in a game the right way or capture the feel of everything you see on the Food Network. And as part of that, uh, because you're a battle chef, you have to defeat your own your creatures and, and get your own ingredients and combine them together into dishes. And the act of cooking is basically a puzzle game. Even, I guess Chopped was a big inspiration. That was a show we were watching when we were like, okay, let's do cooking this way, where you have the improvisation that you see the chefs and the like tension when they're running back and forth the pantry carrying way too many things. And like they're, they're battling over each, with each other over who gets the paprika or something. <laughs> Taking a bunch of different genres and different inspiration uh, sources and blended them all together into one crazy genre. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a big project, but I think we're nearing completion, which is something that for the first time I feel like I can say, and, and that's actually not a lie. We've now had way more responsibility than we would have ever had if we had continued at Disney. It would behoove small teams to consider more what a large game development studio is doing invisibly without you really thinking about it because those are the things you're going to have to do yourself. I've now done payroll and other exciting things. <laughs>
mostly because I was still kind of learning programming when I started the collective and I needed to have programmers in the space with me so I could bother them with questions. I definitely feel like the Chicago indie scene is, you know, even though they're individual indie groups that as a community they act as if they're one company. Suddenly you realize like, oh, there's a community and it's super valuable. 